So if you missed the first video of this series, what are you even doing? Go back and watch it. Anyway, we're in the process of building version 2 of our virtual pinball machine. In the first video, we talked briefly about the project and cut a few pieces of wood. And also ruined a perfectly good circular saw. Today, we're going to dive a little deeper into the construction of the pinball cabinet. Let's go ahead and see how this all fits together real quick. Looking good so far. Let's go ahead and dry fit the TV. So obviously things have changed in the one evening since we cut the initial pieces. And I've decided that the cabinet is going to be too wide. I didn't like the extra space on the sides of the TV. So I decided to trim the width down a little. Man, that is much better. Or is it? Wait a second, did I? I swear there was some reason I made the cabinet that width. No! I ordered a lockdown bar in the standard size, forgetting that I designed the whole cabinet width to meet those specs. Well, this is useless now. So now, $160 plus shipping, and probably about one month later, I should have a custom lockdown bar to meet our new width. Great. Well, in the meantime, Let's put this thing together anyway. We start by attaching the sides to the bottom, trying to make the screw holes uniform and evenly spaced in case we want to leave them exposed in the end. The finish of this thing has not yet been decided. And of course, no project would be complete without my daughter literally riding circles around me on her bike. No, seriously. Let's attach the sides to the bottom already. I use the countersink bit to pre-drill the holes before putting in two inch screws. Repeat the process for the other side after lining everything up. Then, I'll trim the back pieces for the newly reduced width. and attach them using basically the same method as the sides. I've decided to leave my pinball machine mostly open in the back, which may not be a popular decision, but I'm not exactly building a pinball machine to be popular. A few minutes later, I ended up with a larger back piece on the bottom to accommodate the leg mounts, because as you can see, the original piece wasn't tall enough. For some reason, I didn't get any video of myself attaching the front, but I think you can get the gist from the other pieces. That's it for today's video. Join me next time when we make a fake coin door and almost lose a few fingers in the process. Until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep up to date with this project.